how I pick my stocks during a recession. That's what I wanna talk about in this video and share with you because this is a very important topic for beginner investors and those that are still looking to be aggressive, but be aggressive in a defensive type of way. Now, I wanna be very upfront. This is not some sort of cutting edge. This is not some sort of philosophical mastermind, masterpiece of a strategy. It's boring, but it's tried and true. There is a big track record behind it. Now, let me be very clear. Just because there's a track record, there are no guaranteed results for the future. But in my mind, it's rational to at least think, hey, if this thing has worked for years and years and years, then it's rational for me to think that it could continue to work for years and years and years. But again, there are no guarantees. And in fact, with one of the steps here, I'll make sure that we factor that into our thought process as we go through it. But yes, there's gonna be five steps that I wanna cover that walk you through how I pick those stocks and how I pick companies that I think are best during a recession. So let's get to it here with step number one. We wanna find stocks and we wanna buy stocks in a tax-friendly account. So what do I mean by that? Well, location matters, just like in real estate. What we're doing here matters. If you wanna build a great house, a strong house, then yeah, you can think, okay, I need the best materials. I need the best tools. I need the best you know, carpenters and plumbers and electricians. I knew uh, all that stuff. And yes, it is all important. But if you go and apply all those things and then build that house on the side of a mud slope, well, okay, your location was off, so everything that you did is completely and utterly destroyed, it didn't matter. So that's why step number one is all about, we've gotta buy our stocks in a tax-friendly account. So who I would recommend for this is Weeble, and for several reasons. Reason number one being, well, you know what? They're always running promotions, and right now they're giving away six free stocks when you deposit money into it. And I figure, you know what? If you're just getting started, why not get started with some free stocks? I should also note that if you use the link down below uh, in order to get this promotion, that is an affiliate link, so I'll get something too. So I just wanna be transparent about that. So that's reason number one is, hey, let, let's just get ourselves some free stocks, and that's, I, I would argue, a good jumpstart to any sort of investor journey. Reason number two, you look right here and you can see that there are zero commissions and no deposit minimums. So you're gonna, it's not going to cost you any money to get started at all. And you can use any amount that you want. And then reason number three, and this is the big one, we want those tax-friendly accounts, which in technical terms is an IRA account. And this is just going to ensure that your money can grow without government hands reaching in constantly and picking money out of it and picking money out of it. So if you want your money to grow as efficiently as possible, then you're gonna want a tax-friendly account, and tax-friendly accounts are known as IRA accounts. Step number two, find companies that actually make money. And this is very important because I remember when I was just getting started as an investor and a beginner, I would confuse, oh, they have sales, they have revenue as making money, but that's not true. Making money is what's known as a profit. And a profit is the money that you have left over after paying all of your expenses. So we want those companies. We wanna find those companies that have a stock and that stock is saying, yeah, you know what? We've made all our expenses and we still have money left over afterwards. Again, in other words, in terminology sake, we have a profit. Which brings us to step number three. Look for companies that pay a dividend. Because I get it, okay, we wanna find companies that actually make money, but okay, how do we do that? And a quick, quick way to do it is looking for companies that pay a dividend. What is a dividend? A dividend is just a company's way of saying, hey, thank you for being an investor. And it's not a you know empty thank you, it's a thank you where they put their money where their mouth is and they give you money. So they will literally give you money for every share that you own of their stock they'll give you an amount of money, and again, that is known as a dividend, which is really, really neat to think that just for buying and holding their stock, for being an investor in their company, they're gonna pay you periodically for being an investor. That's fantastic, but again, the key thing is, what needs to be the case in order to be able to do that? Well, you actually have to have a profit. You actually have to be making money if you're going to be then sending out some of that leftover money to your shareholders. So companies that are taking losses, companies that, uh, you know, sure they have sales, sure they have revenue, but when they don't have any money left over, well, of course they're not gonna be able to pay a dividend because there's no money there. But companies that do make money can pay that dividend. So that's why it's important to look for companies that pay a dividend. Which brings us to step number four, and this is very, very important. And I would say this is what really separates and makes sure that you're, you're putting yourself in the best possible spot to succeed because 
you, you gotta be always aware of the surrounding. And the surroundings right now is, okay, the past you know, 10 years or so have been very, very good for the stock market. It has not necessarily been hard for companies to make money. It has not necessarily been hard for companies to pay those dividends. But we wanna go beyond that. We wanna see those truly battle-hardened companies that have been able to pay dividends during some really, really rough periods of history. And here's the kicker, not only pay dividends, but actually increase those dividends. Meaning every year they are saying, yeah, we're gonna give you more money. Then the next year, yeah, we're gonna give you more money. And then the next year, yeah, we're gonna give you more money. Doesn't that sound great? But again, let's find those companies that have been able to do that through some very, very difficult times. So how do we do that? Well, the side I chose, and you can, you know, there's a lot of different ones out there, but I'm just gonna use for the sake of this video, Market Beat, and there's just one quick scanner setting that you need to use in order to find these companies. And now it's, you can, if you prefer dividend at a certain amount, you can choose that. But the one that I wanna focus on is right here. And this is crucial. Consecutive years of dividend growth, meaning dividend growth every year. Okay, next year we'll give you more money. Next year we'll give you more money. And what I would recommend, and now if you're watching this video, uh, you know, 10 years from now, this number could be different. But point here being is just think, has the market been really good in past history or really bad? But at the recording of this video, it's been really good. So I wanna get at least 15 years ago. I wanna get out of the scope of time where that thing, where the market has been really bad. Now, if you wanna get really, really crazy, you could do at least 20, 25 years. Believe it or not, some companies have actually raised their dividend for 50 years in a row. So think about what that implies. That implies they've gone through the financial crisis. They've gone through the dot-com dot -com bubble burst. They've gone through wars. They've gone through all sorts of stuff, and yet they were still able to not only pay a dividend, but increase that dividend. But I would say a minimum of at least 15 years. And then, you're gonna click search and scroll down and you're gonna start to see these companies. Now I have a sneaky suspicion that you're gonna recognize, and it is a free scanner which is nice but you get those ads, that's the downside. But I, I have a sneaky suspicion you're gonna start to recognize quite a bit of the companies over here. I mean Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, Walmart, Another oil company, Chevron, Procter & Gamble, that's your deodorants, your shampoos. Oh, hey look, Coca-Cola, another pharmaceutical company. Has anybody ever heard of Pepsi? I know I have. How about Verizon? You get the idea, there's Costco. So the idea here is, hopefully now you're not shocked, like, oh yeah, these are big companies. These companies are going to be making money. They're going to be, be, able, they're going to be able to pay that dividend. And again, we now know that these companies have paid, com or have paid and grown their dividend through some pretty rough times. And then step number five, of these companies that are gonna show up on that scanner, we want to pick companies in different business sectors. So step number five, pick stocks that are across different business sectors. Now, how do you know that? Well, maybe you'll just know off the top of your head. So I, I'm assuming that most people know that, okay, Microsoft, that would be some sort of technology stock. Uh, you know, ExxonMobil, oil company, you know, Chevron, that, that would be an energy stock, right? An oil stock. But let's just say you look at Procter & Gamble and saying, okay, well, what sector is that in? So again, all sites are gonna have this, but for this, if you just click on it, and then if we scroll down here, you're gonna see this, the subsector and sector, household products, but really the main sector right there, consumer staples. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure th that you get stocks that are across several business sectors. So you're gonna have consumer staples, you're gonna have energy, you're gonna have all sorts, uh, you're gonna have utilities, but there are several business sectors out there that you're gonna to wanna to make sure you spread the stocks across, and that is known as diversification. You don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket, because you just never know what could happen, and if something happens, because again, there are no guarantees, so if something does happen to one of those stocks because one of those sectors just, I don't know, just completely becomes obsolete, well then, you know what? At least you're not gonna lose everything. So diversification is key, so I don't want you to just pull up the list and then just start buying a bunch of stocks and let's say oil companies, because who knows what might happen with oil, right? You wanna be able to spread things out and diversify, that's a very, very important step. But this is exactly how I pick stocks during a recession. In some terminology, maybe you've seen the term, if not, uh, you will see it eventually, but you'll see the term re recession-proof stocks. 
And when you stop and think about it, it makes sense why these companies would be recession proof because even if there's a recession, people don't wanna smell bad, right? People wanna still be able to wash their hair. That's where Procter & Gamble comes into play. All those household products, they wanna be able to still have somewhat of a clean house. People still gotta be able to try to get to work. That's where those oil companies come into play. People wanna be able to keep their lights on. They wanna be able to run the AC when it's hot out. That's where those utility companies come into play. Think about it, water companies, electricity companies, are those exciting startup cutting edge companies? No, they're not, but guess what? They make money, they pay dividends, they grow those dividends, and regardless of if we're in a recession or not, people are still gonna wanna have the electricity on. People are still gonna wanna be able to take warm showers, and all that requires those utility companies. So boring, yes. Great for during recessions, absolutely. So I hope this helps. If you do have any other questions or anything like that, please leave those down in the comment section below. If you would like for me to do more videos like this, then please let me know that also. And an easy way to do that is just to hit that like button. But if you have suggestions for other videos, then I do read and reply to all comments. So be sure to read the, or leave those comments down below and I promise to read them. So get out there, do those five steps and find yourself some good quality stocks to buy during a recession. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.